Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this new book, Understanding Vehicle Suspension. Pretty straightforward name, isn't it? Let's take a look at what's in the book. So when you get involved and interested in car suspension, you're immediately confronted with all these different terms, springs, dampers or shocks, roll centers, swing arm lengths, camber, caster, roll steer. The list just goes on and on. But what do all these terms mean? If you try and find a resource that easily and simply answers that question, defines what these terms mean, describes how they're relevant to car suspension, you'll really struggle. Yes, you can find out what camber means, but where do you go to find out what a roll center is and what the relevance of a roll center is? Basically, there's not one single self-contained resource until this book. So what's it cover? Well, in the first couple of pages, it covers springs. It covers bump stops, which are really ancillary springs, extra springs that come into contact when the suspension reaches full deflection. It covers sprung and unsprung weight and why they're important. And it covers spring motion ratios. If you're specifying a spring's stiffness and you don't understand motion ratio, you're more than likely to get the spring stiffness completely wrong. What else does it cover? Well, it covers virtual swing arms, virtual centers. Virtual meaning they're not really a pivot point you can see. They're actually formed by other pivots and the arms and the suspension and the way they work. Sounds complicated. If you start with a simple example, it's not complicated at all. What about roll centers? What do they mean? And why do you have different height roll centers at the front and the back of a car? To involved for me to explain here, covered in this little book. Things like anti-dive, anti-squat, how do they actually work? How can a car suspension resist dive under braking? How can a car suspension resist squat under acceleration? And wheel angles, camber, caster, toe, and how they actually interrelate. How if you change the camber, typically you have to change the toe as well. Look, I find the easiest way to picture all of those angles is what's covered on the right hand side of that uh, excerpt. And that is to make a little model of suspension just with a metal paper clip and a little round bit of rubber like a doorstop and actually swivel it in your hands. Change the steering axis inclination, change the caster, change the camber and then turn the steering axis so you can see what the wheel, in this case that little bit of rubber, actually does. It's so much easier to see it happening in front of you with a little model and that's covered in this book. Then we get a little bit more complex but so relevant. The first thing is we look at roll steer. That's when the car rolls during cornering. The front or rear wheels do extra steering. Basically any car of the last 25 years has got roll steer characteristics built into it. If you just take out all of those bushes and replace them with hard polyurethane, you're going to see some really unusual reactions to the car because it already has the flexions of those taken into account in the way in which it corners. And then on the right hand page there, the single most important thing to understand about car handling and that's tires, slip angle, and weight transfer. Weight transfer across the front, weight transfer across the back, and how that weight transfer influences tire grip. And it's nothing like just seeing how much the car's body rolls. Lots of people think that body roll and weight transfer are the same thing. They are completely different. And then finally, in the end of the book, I've got some tables that cover quick handling tips. What do you do if you've got a front wheel drive and it understeers? What, if you've got, what, if you, what do you do if you've got a rear wheel drive and it oversteers? And what about all wheel drive cars? And so much in the handling of those depends on torque split, how the torque is sent to the front, sent to the back, and even how the torque might be transferred laterally. So what's in the book? It's a short book. It's actually based on chapter one of this book, my major book on vehicle ride and handling. And if you want the fullest detail, 
absolutely definitely buy this bigger book it's also much more expensive of course what's in this book 35 pages printed in black and white to keep the price down it covers springs bump stops sprung and unsprung weight spring specifications and motion ratios natural frequencies something you'll find in no other book on vehicle suspension so easy to measure these days with a smartphone damping shock absorbers <clears throat> suspension and steering pivots virtual swing arms and virtual centers roll centers roll axes front anti-dive and rear anti-lift wheel angles which includes all the camber caster toe and so on the tire center of pressure and how that actually changes during cornering how it migrates ackerman angles steering angles interrelationship of wheel angles roll steer tires slip angles and load lateral weight transfer and grip biasing lateral weight transfer getting more at the front or more at the back depending on whether you want to address understeer or oversteer body roll and how not all body roll is bad static weight distribution whether your car is a front engine a mid engine a rear engine for example will influence where that weight is distributed within the wheelbase tire friction circle something that people frown and think is really complicated and actually is quite straightforward the tables on quick tan handling tips and then some references for further reading it's 35 pages it's got only the essentials it covers the things that you absolutely need to know in order to understand vehicle suspension it's printed in black and white which can reduce the cost this much bigger book is a full color book so it's much more expensive and understanding vehicle suspension it's available from amazon now in your country and it's really really well priced to get it out as much as possible into the marketplace because i think so many people would benefit from what's in this book thank you